and get started with this evening's public hearing. So we'd like to invite everyone to come inside the auditorium. We have plenty of seating available, and so we'll go ahead and get started so that uh, we can begin the presentation on time. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Ricky Clark, and I'm with the Indiana Department of Transportation. Uh, very happy that you are here with us this evening. Very happy to be here uh, this evening as we continue our conversation uh, with regard to an intersection improvement uh, project on US 31 and uh, State Road 10, and then also Dewey Street um, as well. Hopefully, as you've arrived, you've had an opportunity to visit with members of our team out in the hallway area. Hopefully you had an opportunity to pick up uh, copies of information. Uh, certainly, many of you probably were with us uh, back in June uh, when we held an informational meeting uh, to talk about this proposal. Uh, certainly, much has changed uh, since then. Uh, first off, uh, more seating, more room. Uh, if you were with us in June, it was a very uh, close-knit affair, uh, certainly. And so uh, we're happy and uh, very thankful that the school has opened their doors to us and accommodated us this evening. Um, with regard to tonight's uh, presentation, uh, at this particular point in time, we have arrived at the NDOT public hearing. Um, now, in the hallway, many of you might be wondering, right, what's the difference between uh, tonight's presentation at the public hearing stage and what was presented uh, back in June. Um, essentially, in June was an information meeting to um, certainly bring forward a proposal for your consideration. Uh, at the public hearing stage, which is where we are this evening, uh, NDOT is at a decision-making point. So this is a little bit further uh, in the process in terms of the proposal's development. Uh, we're at a project milestone uh, at this particular time, at the public hearing stage, uh, this is where we are very close to making a decision on what action to carry forward. And so uh, we're very happy that you're here this evening. Uh, so there'll be some differences in terms of how tonight's uh, format uh, will be uh, carried forward. Uh, so we'll talk about that in some subsequent slides. Um, first and foremost, I want to make sure that everyone had an opportunity to pick up information. Uh, on the tables as you signed in, hopefully you signed in with your uh, name and information, we're going to utilize those sign-in sheets to uh, communicate information to you in moving forward. And so if you did not have an opportunity to sign in, if you'd be so kind as to uh, sign in throughout the duration of the evening, so that after this evening we can certainly keep you informed as to what is happening with the proposal. Um, on some of the other tables, there's other information as well about how to submit comments to NDOT. Uh, so certainly when NDOT holds a public hearing in this form and fashion, there are two purposes. Uh, the first purpose is to present information for your consideration. Uh, the second purpose, and the most important purpose, is for NDOT to receive uh, information from you as a project stakeholder. Um, so there's information, uh, there's a handout uh, in the four-year area that outlines the several ways that you can uh, submit information uh, during this evening or perhaps after the public hearing uh, tonight. Uh, our email address, our mailing address, if you'd like to participate as a speaker uh, this evening, all of those options are afforded uh, to you. And so we'll talk a little bit about that in subsequent slides. Uh, next slide, please. Um, at this time, um, hopefully you had an opportunity to visit with members of our team. I'm just going to introduce uh, several members of our team that are on the stage this evening. Uh, keep in mind that we've got a lot of NDOT resource uh, here this evening, uh, so we won't go through and introduce uh, every member of, of our team, but rather just the speakers that you'll hear from uh, in the next several minutes. Again, my name is Ricky Clark. I'm with NDOT. Uh, I work out of uh, the department's uh, central office uh, based out uh, of Indianapolis. Uh, very happy to be here representing the Division of Communications uh, and also the Office of Public Involvement as well. Uh, with me this evening we have Matt Deichley, who is the Director of Communications. Matt is based out of our LaPorte District Office. The LaPorte District, they oversee and coordinate uh, planning, project development, construction, maintenance activities uh, for Northwest uh, Indiana. And we'll hear from Matt in uh, the next several minutes. 
Also with us this evening from the design uh, engineering uh, firm Troyer Group, we have Chris Wagner, who uh, many of you probably remember from the June meeting uh, as a presenter as well. Uh, Chris will walk us through several of the design uh, displays later in the presentation uh, uh, this evening. Uh, at this time, I would like to recognize uh, if we have any uh, members, uh, any of our elected or perhaps our local public officials who might be in the audience with us this evening. Um, I'd like to recognize uh, any members of our elected officials or perhaps our public officials, local officials here this evening. Uh, do we have any members, any local officials who might be with us this evening? Yeah, very well. Uh, if you'd be so kind as to just uh, kind of address, uh, introduce yourself to our audience. Thank you so much for being here, sir. Councilman, thank you so much for being here, sir. Yes, ma'am. Councilwoman, thank you so much for being here. Councilwoman, thank you so much for being here. Yes, sir. Mike Dalton, Marshall County Commissioner. Commissioner, thank you so much for being here. Additional public officials, uh, elected officials, uh, how about this gentleman here, yes, sir? Councilman, thank you so much for being here. Yes, sir. Council, thank you so much for being here. Yes, sir. President, Council, thank you so much for being here. Yes, ma'am. Lisa Mulaney, Clerk Treasurer, Town of Vargas. Treasurer, thank you so much for being here. Additional public officials at this time? Okay, very well. Very well. So you can see just by the introductions about the room that uh, the proposal that we're here to continue a conversation on uh, is, is very important. This is a, a significant proposal for this community. And so uh, we're very happy that our local officials are here with us this evening. Again, uh, on behalf of NDOT, we're very uh, happy to have an opportunity to uh, continue a uh, conversation uh, this evening. Um, in terms of the slide that you see behind me, uh, certainly because this is an, an official NDOT public hearing, we did publish legal notice uh, in the local paper, I believe it's the Pilot News out of Plymouth. Um, in addition, we did mail out copies of the legal notice to uh, individuals on our mailing list. If you did not receive a copy of our legal notice, that just simply means that for whatever reason you weren't on our mailing list, but if you sign in this evening, we'll make sure that we update that database and so that for future communication, future correspondence, uh, then you'll receive something from us uh, via mail. Next slide, please. Um, in terms of this proposal, um, and it, kind of, it was illustrated a little bit just through some of the introductions, when you look about this audience, there are many, many stakeholders, uh, many, many individuals with a stake as to what may happen at this particular location, was 31 the state groups in. Um, so we've tried to, to illustrate uh, just the, the numbers of stakeholders, and there's probably a lot more that we can list on uh, this particular slide. But basically the main point is that it's NDOT's charge to uh, propose a project that takes into consideration all the various stakeholders, um, and then come out with a proposed action uh, that would pose the least amount of impact uh, to all of our stakeholders. And so certainly as we move forward through the presentation, um, we want to keep in mind that we're proposing an action uh, that's going to impact uh, many stakeholders. So we need to be mindful of that. We need to be cognizant of that. Um, and so, again, it only speaks to the importance of this evening's public hearing to make sure that we keep that in mind and perform our due diligence. Next slide, please. Um, in terms of project development, um, the three yellow boxes uh, at the bottom of the screen kind of illustrate uh, the public involvement, public outreach points. Um, certainly many of you are familiar with the June public information meeting uh, that we had uh, several months ago. Uh, the middle box, the middle yellow box, illustrates the public hearing. And again, the public hearing is being held at a decision-making point in terms of project development. Um, at this particular time, NDOT has developed an environmental document to outline um, all of the impact that might be associated with this proposed project. Um, so whenever we develop an environmental document, in between that draft document and finalizing that environmental document, we must hold a public hearing. And so that's where we are with that middle box. Uh, the third box will be to communicate a decision. Decision, pardon me. 
Um, certainly, we are respectful of your time this evening, respectful for, of the time that you spent with us back in June, and so we want to make sure that whatever decision is carried forward, uh, that we make sure that it is communicated uh, with you. Next slide, please. So why are we here? Um, this environmental document that I just spoke of a few moments ago is kind of the genesis of uh, what is at the heart of the public here. Um, at the environmental document stage, NDOT, as a State Department of Transportation, is charged with developing an environmental document. And basically the purpose of this document is to clearly define a purpose and need for a particular project. Uh, once we've identified a purpose and need, then develop alternatives that meet that purpose and need. Um, and then at the time that we develop alternatives, uh, during that process, a preferred alternative is identified. Now, back in June, we kind of presented our preferred alternative, and we'll talk more about that preferred alternative this evening, but um, the environmental document is key because without that documentation, the project could not advance forward. And so we've had to produce an environmental document, which, uh, by the way, is available for review and inspection uh, this evening out in the foyer area. Um, but the environmental document has been released for public involvement. It is available also uh, at the public library here in Argos, and then also available on the NDOT website as well. Uh, next slide, please. Very good. So in terms of this environmental document, one of the first uh, task items associated with that environmental document is developing a purpose and need for the project. What is the, what is the purpose and need? What is the challenge, the transportation challenge that NDOT as the state's DOT, what are we trying to solve? So in terms of this particular proposal, uh, this is a safety improvement project, a safety enhancement project. Um, we've identified a purpose uh, for this particular proposal as enhancing safety at the intersection of State Road 10 and US 31, enhancing safety at the intersection of Dewey Street and US 31 as well. Um, kind of the need in terms of this project is kind of derived from uh, several areas. Uh, certainly enhancing safety, uh, reducing the number of uh, vehicle accidents, vehicle crashes at this location. Also, taking a look at the intersection and the configuration in relation to uh, what might be happening in terms of site distance impact uh, from the railroad bridge uh, that's located just south of State Road 10. Um, so in terms of developing purpose and need, this is our purpose and need statement uh, for the project. Next slide, please. So once we've developed a purpose and need, what is, what is the transportation challenge that we're trying to solve? Uh, the next step is to develop a list of alternatives and then compare those alternatives against the purpose and need. So with any environmental document, as, uh, the first alternative to always be developed is the no bill. And it, it basically is how it reads. You know, what would happen if NDOT did not move forward with any type of improvement? Now, the no bill certainly doesn't preclude uh, just general maintenance, preventative maintenance types of activities that have to happen. But the no bill is, what if we simply didn't move forward with an improvement there at the intersection, what would happen? Well, that's not going to meet the purpose and need of the project. That's not going to enhance uh, safety in terms of what's happening at the intersection. So then we move to another alternative. What if we install a traffic signal at that uh, particular intersection? Is that going to meet the purpose and need? Well, one of the con concerns with the traffic signal is the, the east-west uh, traffic, uh, the, the numbers, the volume, the numbers in terms of volume. Um, they're just, uh, they're, they're not significant numbers that would warrant the installation of a traffic signal. Um, so when you look at the traffic signal, then that doesn't necessarily meet the purpose and need of, of the project as well. So then the next, next alternative would be, what if an interchange were to be constructed at this location? Well, an interchange uh, certainly is an alternative uh, that's uh, that NDOT has looked at as part of the development of the environmental document. However, one of the key items with the interchange is that it would require um, a great deal of time in terms of planning, uh, in terms of development, and then certainly delivery. Um, so certainly cost is always a consideration as well. So the interchange, in terms of our purpose and need for this project, didn't quite meet our purpose and need uh, at this point in time. 
So then we're left with the J turn proposal, and this has been identified, as we mentioned in June, as our preferred alternative. Uh, some of the aspects with the J turn um, intersection it would uh, enhance safety at the intersection, uh, it would reduce the number of accidents uh, that would occur at the intersection. Uh, the project uh, could be delivered uh, within a timely manner, a timely fashion as well. Um, so as was the case back in June, the J-turn is still, at this point in time, it dots prefer uh, alternative. Next slide, please. Uh, in terms of project resources, as I mentioned, we have a copy of our environmental document. The design plans uh, are available for review and inspection uh, this evening. However, after tonight, if you'd like to take a closer look at those documents, uh, there are several locations listed on the screen behind me. Uh, the NDOT website also is an excellent repository for information. Uh, so if you'd like to take a closer look, we did post a copy of our uh, presentation. We did post a copy of the display boards on the website this afternoon. Uh, sometimes it's nice to review them on the website, to manipulate the sizes, and, and so forth. Next slide. All right, at this time, I'm going to reintroduce Chris Wagner with the Troy Group to walk us through some of the uh, design aspects of the proposal. Chris. Thank you, Ricky. So first, as, as stated during the note, purpose of the this is a safety improvement project. The first thing is to what are, the, what are the crashes? So this is a list of the crashes from the last four years. These are all the severe crashes. Uh, these crashes rank this intersection as one of the top 5% most injury prone um, intersections in the state. So because of that is why this project is being presented. As you can see, crashes with no injury, the total was 20. Non-incapacitating injury, there was eight. Incapacitating injury, there was 11. And there was one fatality in the last four years, from 2012 to 2016. Now, this past year has been under construction. Speed is slower, one lane of traffic. One of the individuals out there has noted that the traffic um, crashes have gone down. That is very, very good. But right now, these are unique circumstances where there's less speed and only one lane of traffic. So here's the intersection as it, as it is now. This is uh, State Road 10, US 31. And you basically are fighting for this position right here with semis, with uh, livestock callers, with trucks, all trying to get in this spot to make their through movement, left turns, well, even right turns, and trying to figure out who has arrived what. That is the big problem right now at the intersection. And then you also have the bridge, which also limits sight. The sight is adequate for the road, however, it does not let you get to see very far, when you also have other distractions, which are, again, these conflicts over on the other side. J-turn. J-turn removes this conflict point in the middle where everybody's jostling for position and moves those movements out. So basically, if you want to go through, you have to turn right, then you basically make your left turn, and then you make another right turn. There's no more conflict here, there's no traffic opposing you, just the traffic on the main road, which you already have. If you want to just make a left, you just remove this right turn issue. This moving of those conflict points away reduces the number of crossing um, points. So when, you, when we look at intersections, right now this is existing, there are 40, I believe 42 conflict points. 24 of those are crossing. That means if you get hit in one of those locations, it's a T-bone. Very, very, usually very, very bad, lots of bad accidents. There's also 10 merging, so this is the right turns where you basically are getting on the traffic in the same direction of traffic. Still a very, very bad accident, but usually not as bad as a T-bone. And then eight diverging, this is the people who are turning right off of the main road onto the side road. Usually these are people rear-ending them because they're slowing down in the through lane. The J-turn, the crossing movements go from 24 conflict points all in one spot to four of them. Uh, and depending if they're a left turn, uh, it'll be here, and you'll see in our proposed design, this left turn is actually moved to a different location. You still have the same number of merging and diverging conflict points, but again, those are less severe accidents generally. So because of this, J-turns have been found to be safer in reducing the number of rear end angle turning and sideswipe accidents. So rear end, 
a reduction of 38%. Angle, that's again more of the T-bone, 100%. Turning, 69%. And side swipe, 63%. And then by severity, number of injuries, reduction by 82% and fatalities by 50%. So this brings us to the State Road 10, US 31, and US 31 and Dewey intersection. Because of the bridge, we cannot put in a true J-turn. We cannot put the J-turn on either end of State Road 10. The bridge is in the way. So we are putting the J-turns on either side of Dewey Street and State Road 10. This does cause some problems in the design because we have to limit or be smart with the way maneuvers are being done so that vehicles cannot get through the intersection. So this is at State Road 10, this is on the north hand side. And I'll go back. One of the things that changed from the last time we were here is we removed this left turn bay for northbound traffic onto State Road 10. The reason for that removal was the concern that people that were going northbound, who want to turn west on the Dewey Street to this new industrial complex right here, well, they can't do that right now. The reason they can't do that is that makes a through move. Well, now, if they were, if this left turns here, they're going to think that's their J turn, and they're going to get stuck. We don't want to provide access for a semi to be able to turn around here because, again, it makes it so cars and trucks can go through there eliminates the safety um, benefits. So we are pushing them to this other J turn. And then there's a similar thing for southbound movement, southbound traffic over here at Dewey Street. Okay. Another thing you'll see on our graphic right here, so we are putting islands, they will be made mountable. So semis can drive over them uh, in bigger trucks, combines, farm equipment, um, of that nature. The key part would, make it, would be making sure that vehicles can't go through the intersection. So there will be delineators, a little bit higher curb in that location. Still need to be safe, but again, we're trying to deter the through movement straight through the intersection. So once the through movement, we want to move it over to the J. This distance is 1,000 feet. And then there's a similar thing on the southbound. Now one difference uh, is a direct left turn for westbound Dewey to go south on US 31. Uh, that is in relationship to uh, information from the town that they want to develop this quadrant over here. Now, a recent case study is a project that was done, and this was presented the last one, at US 41 and State Road 114. This is the town of Morocco. It's on the Illinois-Indiana border. And 114 services the biggest landfill or the busiest landfill in the state. So they have truck traffic that's similar to a State Road 10 in Dewey. Um, they do not have quite the same traffic on US 41, but is a very similar situation specifically for trucks, combines, and livestock. So this was installed in May of 2015. It had very similar traffic uh, history, same type of crashes. Uh, and since it's, since it's been opened, there have been zero injury accidents in the two and a half years. And then now we'd like to go over some of the summary. We're going to summarize some of the comments we heard at the last public hearing. And the first one Matt will take. So one of the things we wanted to make sure we addressed uh, from our last meeting is we heard obviously lots of really good comments. People that didn't know why we were doing this or for what reasons we were doing this. And so what we wanted to do is take a moment and kind of address some of the frequently asked questions and frequent comments that we received kind of dispel some misinformation or at least answer some questions a little better. So the first one is obviously the preference for an interchange. Uh, obviously that's one thing we've heard from a lot of folks. Uh, so what, the reason why we, we have preferred J-turn over an interchange uh, is the purpose of the project is to improve safety immediately and cost effectively. So what we're gonna see here is in one construction season, we can put the J-turn and have the safety benefits a lot faster than several years of planning uh, for an interchange. 
So that's something we can see right away. And the, the important thing we want to make sure people understand too is that from a J turn and an interchange, they both have virtually the same crash reductions when it comes to accidents. So injury crashes are going to be virtually the same type of reduction whether we put it in a J turn or an interchange. So it really satisfies that safety need. Um, also, media improvements are not going to prohibit uh, a potential change for a potential adding of an interchange in the future. So, putting this feature in does not eliminate the chance that an interchange could be put in at some point in the future. Um, it just solves that safety issue right now, which is what we're looking to do. Uh, so, I also wanted to address some of the future US 31 upgrades. Uh, so, right now we're developing a strategy to upgrade US 31 where we haven't already. So, we already have uh, from 30 to South Bend, and of course, uh, South in Kokomo area and South. Uh, so to do that, we're going to start looking at uh, potential interchanges, and here's some of the criteria we're going to look at uh, to address those interchanges. So traffic volume, consistency with regional road network, cost, uh, safety, and access. So that's going to be some of the criteria we're going to look at as to whether an interchange will be put in place. Um, but the one thing we're addressing right now, which this j turn here does, is we're addressing the immediate operation and safety concerns on 31 with these uh, cost-effective uh, solutions that, that are maybe a little smaller in action. So this j turn as we're developing the strategy for US 31, this is going to solve that safety problem right now. And down the road, if things change, then we can certainly add more uh, based on traffic volume, safety access, and so on. Uh, some of the more frequently asked questions and comments that we received, I'm going to uh, pass this back to Chris, and we're going to answer some of those as well. OK, and I just want to highlight the, the bold print at the top, that is the comment that we received, and these are our answers to that. So, comment, maneuverability of large vehicles, semis, livestock trailers, farm equipment, and school buses. Basically, the, the, the comment was that, that, that the j turn will not be able to handle that. So, these are our attorney templates. This is what we have to go with. These are, these are templates designed by the Federal Highway as to what an interstate semi, a triple trailer semi, a combine, a school bus, the area that they need to make a turn um, at speed, at, at, when they're going slow, doing U-turns, you name the type of maneuver, this is what we have to, to make sure that they can do it. So we have to first plan it before we can build it. So here is the one for an interstate hauler. Uh, interstate semi, so this is about 60, yeah, 67 feet long, and this making the turn. This is a triple, making the turn. This is a combine, also making the turn, and a bus, making the turn. Now, one item that we'd also like to present with this is, in the design, there is a left turn and a right turn lane for these J turns. So. It's sort of hard to see here. You see it in your handoff as well. Basically, when a vehicle is on a side road and they are getting over onto US 31, if they need to turn left or go through, they're basically going to cross 31 and get onto the left turn lane. That left turn lane is right there for them. If it's not, it's way down the road because you're on Dewey and you need to go north to the northern one to, to make your left turn. So then you're getting onto 31 just like normal. You have plenty of room to, move, to do your weave. But if you're at 10 and you're crossing, you just get right over on that left-hand turn lane, and then you can turn around at that J turn and immediately get into the right turn lane. So that you are no longer, never basically driving with the through traffic, you are crossing it very much like you are now. However, you only have to address that through traffic. You're not addressing the other cars that are on State Road 10 or on Dewey Street coming back towards you. So again, we use the case study US 41 and State Road 114. While the traffic is different, the maneuvers are very, very much the same. They are semis, they are interstate haulers, they are, this is also farm country, so there's farm equipment in this area. You will notice this is actually a much, much smaller J turn. It's only about three or 400 feet from 114 to the J turn. One of the problems that was from here is it worked great for moving traffic, but people got confused as to was this the J turn or was this the J turn? This is my left turn because we're so close. So we spread it out, gave more distance. Also, in our circumstance, we are have, we do have vehicles going at speed that need to use these J turns because we are having to cut off some left turns. So here's time lapse. 
showing these vehicles making the, making the turn. Here's a school bus using the J-turn. Now we did speed them up a little bit. Here's a livestock trailer using the U-turn. It, it is during the middle of the day. Uh, now here is the operating under busy conditions for this intersection. No. One thing of note is look at the multiple trucks that are queuing in that left turn bay. So previously those would all have been having to wait or fighting for that center, the center island. These right here would be fighting for the same spot and they would not be able to function. Economic impact due to restriction of truck access. Trucks can still access this, the intersection after the J-turns are installed. The time increase to cross traffic ranges from 30 to 60 seconds. So we've modeled the intersection. We actually had to model it conservatively as if everybody stopped at every, con every conflict point. So you come up to US 31, you stop. You have a, a four you have a stop sign. You then get on 31, you get to the J-turn, you stop. You then progress on that, and then you go on your merry way. The actual case is there's actually you. There is no stop. So if you have a break in traffic, you can continue to go. But in our modeling, we have to model as if it's a stop condition. So the average delay, the average increase in time is between 30 and 60 seconds. That 60 seconds is if you were basically taking westbound Dewey and you need to go continue across, you're going first north, past State Road 10, to the J-turn, doing your J-turn, heading south, and then turning right onto Dewey. That's roughly 60 seconds on average. So here's our traffic simulation. So we're showing some of this stuff. So again, we, we went out there, we took counts. Uh, we took previous counts, because again, it's under construction. So we sort of base this off then off our previous data as well. We got information on the new businesses that are in the area. We came up with some with our traffic data. That's a good point. Where are the numbers for those counts? So the numbers of the counts during the peak hour, the maximum traffic on State Road 10 was roughly 150 cars in an hour that was heading westbound. <laughs> and the, the max traffic on 31 is right, I think, five or 600. What? We'll, we'll, we'll address it in our comments as to what those dates are. Okay. Understood. Uh, and all comments are going to have to be Yep. They can barely turn and they don't even are considered. Understood. So we, we, we still have more comments that we're addressing. That's not a comment, it's a question. I know. It's, 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 it's a, a comment. It's we, we have it. Yeah. We're going to talk about it. Okay, so, so back to the capacity for so our analysis and also based on, on when we received or got the traffic data. So if, say it was a Tuesday or Wednesday. The economic impact due to restriction of truck access. So again, we're saying that this is not going to impact the capacity of the intersection as it currently sits. In fact, it, it slightly improves it, but basically will be operating at the same capacity. The existing intersection right now is operating at a C or B. A C or B basically means that on average, you are waiting 16 to 25 seconds at the intersection. That is considered to be a, a well-functioning intersection. Once the J-turn is in, we're projecting mostly Bs with some Cs. Again, your, your delay, basically idle time, is 16 to 25 seconds. 
probably more like 11, 11 to 15 seconds. This is during peak traffic, not Northern games. Those are, those are rare occasions. But peak, <laughs> peak times during the rest of the year. Project purpose is to reduce travel time between South Bend and Indianapolis. It's not impacting traffic on US 31, so that is basically the same as it is now. Emergency vehicle response across the US 30 will take longer. This is correct. It will take longer. It will take, on average, no more than 30 seconds. This is basically taking State Road 10, heading westbound, again, coming to a complete stop as if you were a normal vehicle, turning right, going to the J turn, coming to a complete stop as if you're a normal vehicle, turning left, and then turning right on to State Road 10. An emergency vehicle response will have its lights going and they have the right of way, so they should be able to improve, should, now I'm not saying it's always will, the 30 seconds. But, again, yes, it will, as it analyzed, as I said analyzed, would be an average of 30 second increase. J-turns will not accommodate horse and buggy traffic. The J-turn will maintain the refuge area off US 31 travel lanes. So currently, there's the center refuge. A horse and buggy crosses US 31, they get in the center, they then have to cross US 31 again. The J-turn moves that refuge place to the right turns and the left turns and their shoulders. So that they are still not in the travel lanes. Now they are having to go along US 31. We agree that that is not ideal, but it is not in the through traffic. But if they go off the 10, they can't cross over. If they go across two lanes of traffic. They're going across two lanes of traffic as they are now. It, it's a thing when I get back, but again, we, we've increased, so the left turn and the right turn basically start at the intersection. For State Road 10, that, that left turn is, is basically starting right at State Road 10. So it's a thousand feet long. It's, it's a long left turn, but it's basically, it's about as close as we can get it to there, so it's as much of a straight across as, as we can get. US 31 traffic volumes are too high for a J-turn. J-turns have been implemented successfully in areas across the US, many on four-lane divided <coughs> highways with higher traffic than on US 31. So Missouri has put them in where the traffic was one and a half times what is seen on US 31. The state of Maryland, where it's two and a half times the traffic as US 31. And Michigan, five and a half times. They put them on roads that have 100,000 cars. All right, project schedule. This uh, public information meeting was held in June 2017. The NEPA document was released for public involvement August 2017. The public hearing is today. Uh, there will be another public hearing for the one at State Road 110 next week on Wednesday. Uh, we plan on finalizing the environmental document and design around November of 2017 for construction in the summer of 2018. No, very much a proposal as at this time, a proposal for consideration uh, one of the purposes, as I mentioned, for the public hearing is to accept uh, public comment. And I have not made a decision in regards to this action. Uh, as part of the NEPA process, the National Environmental Policy Act, uh, we must go through a series of uh, activities and steps in terms of establishing our purpose and need, establishing alternatives, and then also making sure that whatever alternative is carried forward meets that purpose and need. But at the end of that, uh, public involvement, uh, public input, and public comment are, are certainly important in terms of uh, factoring into uh, a decision. Now, certainly NDOT, as the State Departments of Transportation, uh, is the decision maker. However, 
public comment that we hope to receive this evening, that we hope to receive over the next several weeks, comments of even folks that may not even be here this evening. Uh, certainly if you look around the auditorium and you know of others who uh, certainly have uh, a strong feeling one way or the other in regards to the proposal, um, I would encourage you to take information back to them and encourage them to submit comments uh, as well. Um, so certainly it's not a done deal, a decision has not been made, uh, the public hearing is all part of that decision making process. Uh, in regards to the slide behind me, there's a date, October 6th. Um, we are respectfully requesting that if you would like to submit comments in regards to this proposal, um, if uh, by any way that you could submit those comments by October 6th. Um, one of the key things in terms of, of coming and arriving to a decision is that um, part of NDOT's activity is to develop a public uh, hearing transcript. A transcript of everything that has occurred this evening, a transcript that would include comments we received tonight and over the next several weeks. As part of uh, NDOT's decision-making process, we sit down, review that transcript, and review comment uh, by comment by comment. Um, and as part of our duties in terms of developing an environmental document, uh, which is again available today for review, in that environmental document, we have to uh, address those comments that are presented in the, forum, in the uh, forum today and then also the comments we've received over the next several weeks before we can approve an environmental document and move forward. Again, as I mentioned, the project can't move forward until that environmental document uh, has been uh, approved. Part of that approval process is to respond and address public comment that is presented as part of the public hearing. So by all means, if, uh, if you'd be so kind to submit comments by October 6th, then we will make sure that those are included in the official public hearings transcript. Uh, the transcript uh, is part of the public record. It can be requested uh, upon completion as uh, you can submit a public records uh, a request to NDOT in terms of receiving a copy of that transcript as it is part of the public record. Um, so again, uh, that transcript is part of NDOT's decision-making process, uh, part of our review. Uh, next slide, please. So in terms of next steps, as I mentioned before, um, communicating a decision, whatever that my decision might be, to move forward with the JGEM proposal, if there's a different decision, if there's a different outcome, uh, communicate, communicate, communicate. And so we want to make sure that we're performing our due diligence to do that. Again, uh, speaks to, uh, if you haven't had an opportunity to sign in, uh, please do so, so we can add you to our database. Um, and so we're going to be working diligently over the next uh, several weeks and then two months to make sure that we communicate whatever the outcome is back to you. Next slide, please. All right, so at this time, that is the last slide of our formal presentation. However, uh, the presentation is not over. Um, at the very beginning, I mentioned that the purpose of Tonight's public hearing is twofold. Firstly, it's an opportunity to present the proposal. Secondly, it's an opportunity to receive comment and input from you. So you've heard us speak for, say, the last 45 minutes. And so now it's uh, your opportunity to uh, participate as part of this evening's uh, presentation. Uh, as you arrive, you might have picked up a, a one-page sheet on one of the, uh, after you sign in, outlining the ways that you can submit public comment this evening. Uh, one of the ways would be participating as a speaker during our comment session, which we'll, uh, I'll explain in the next several minutes. Uh, the other ways are available to you. You can submit comments via email. Uh, there are comment forms in the hallway area as well, uh, and our mailing address is on the one-page sheet. Um, you can certainly participate as a speaker and submit comments in the other uh, options as well. Um, basically, every comment that is submitted, whether it be verbal or written, uh, will be uh, reviewed, evaluated, fully considered as part of the NDOT decision-making process. So to my right, you'll probably notice that there is a freestanding uh, microphone uh, that uh, hopefully we'll make sure that it's on. Um, but during our comment session, you will have the floor. You'll have an opportunity to present a comment or a statement and have that comment entered into the official public record. Uh, we have several recording devices this evening. We will record those comments so that they may be transcribed and entered into a transcript. Now, one of the aspects in terms of the comment session is that during that session, uh, we are soliciting comments and statements for the public record. Um, I recognize many of you will have specific questions. 
Uh, we would respectfully request that if you have a question, you can certainly present it as a comment for the comment session. However, if you'd like uh, discussion or perhaps a Q&A in terms of that particular question, our display area is available to you throughout the duration of the evening. We have members of our design team, they're posted outside, they can answer any question that you might have. However, during the comment session, uh, we won't be addressing questions. You can present your question as a statement or present a statement so that we can make sure that we accurately capture those comments in the official transcript uh, for this particular project. If you have a question though, again, members of our team, more than happy to entertain those questions in the uh, foyer area at this time. Um, the second announcement, any of you might have noticed that we had a table titled Speaker's Schedule. There was a blue sheet and then also a pink sheet of paper located in the foyer area. The blue sheet is an indi indicates that, uh, that we were soliciting local officials, public officials, elected officials who might be with us uh, this evening who have signed in, requesting an opportunity to present his or her comment and have it entered into the official record. Certainly it is in knots. Um, uh, form and fashion in terms of a public hearing to uh, afford an opportunity to our elected and local officials to present their comments. Um, at the conclusion of our local officials presenting their comments, then we will transition to the pink sheet of paper, which I have at the podium, uh, which we've had several uh, speakers sign in uh, this evening. As a matter of fact, we have a number of folks who have signed in uh, requesting an opportunity to speak. And so to ensure that we have time to accommodate every speaker this evening that has signed in. And perhaps having heard, uh, once we hear from our speakers who have signed in, there might be others in the audience who might want to also participate as speakers. We want to make sure we accommodate and have plenty of time for those speakers. We are going to use a time limitation device. What is that? What does that mean? All right, well, let me explain. During the comment session, we would respectfully request that our speakers present their comments um, in, uh, give, we, we're gonna, we will afford each speaker, I should say, two minutes to present his or her comment. Two minutes to present his or her comment. And the way that we're going to keep track of time is we're going to utilize this traffic signal. So, when our first speaker begins to present his or her comment, they will see the green light. Yes, the green light. Um, so that's an indication that your time has begun uh, to present your comment for the audience to see. At 1 minute 30 seconds, this green light will disappear. Did it disappear? You're good. All right, and then you will see the yellow light. That's an indication that you have approximately 30 seconds to uh, begin uh, to, to wrap up your comments. And then at 2 minutes, we all know what will happen. Or we should know what will happen. The red light will appear. Very good, very good. And again, this is to make sure that we not only accommodate every person that has signed up to speak, but I suspect there will be others in the audience who would like an opportunity to present his or her comment or inclusion in the public comment session this evening. So with that as an introduction, we've got more speakers, very good. We are going to begin with our blue sheet of paper, which again is the sheet that we have asked our local officials to sign in as speakers. Uh, there's a floor microphone and podium that's available to our speakers. Uh, you can certainly address um, members of the NDOT team. Um, if you'd like to address the audience, that's, that's fine as well. However, just uh, keep in mind and be mindful of the two minute time limitation. I'll be here monitoring the time limitation device. Uh, to, to respectfully uh, remind you if you're running out of time and so forth. So at this time, we'll begin with our elected officials, our elected, our local officials who have signed in, requesting an opportunity to speak and have his or her comment entered into the official public record. Again, uh, the freestanding microphone is available to uh, those speakers. Our first speaker on our schedule will be Charles Randy Sneed, Argos Town Council. Argus. Councilman Sneed. Not Argos. Oh, Argos. Argus. Argus. My apologies. My apologies. Thank, Thank you very much. The Councilman Sneed. Yeah, there he is. Very good. And again, I'll mention, while Councilman Sneed is making his way forward, even if you participate as a speaker this evening, 
by all means, feel free to supplement your verbal comments with written statements um, as well. Submit those via email or actually our mailing address uh, as well. Councilman Sweet, the uh, floor is now yours, sir. Thank you, sir. Although I'm not the voice of the whole Argus Town Council, I speak for myself and I think I have some others. We are not in favor of a J-turn down here. It's been said we are, but we are not. This J-turn is not the answer to a problem that we have. You know, it's a funny thing. You can go down US 31, and once you get down into, oh, the other side of Miami County, you start crossing into Hamilton and Tipton and on down to Allen, they have all kinds of new roads, all kinds of interchanges, and we can't get nothing. They come up this way, and they don't want to spend no money in our area, and I know they're not happy with what I have to say, but I, at this point in time, it really doesn't matter. And you know, it's been brought to our attention, someone uh, about our uh, friends, that are horse and buggy drivers, and we have quite a few in this community, in different sects that drive horse and buggy, and you know, they need to farm, they have to cross this highway. No one seems to care. You know, they're gonna block this off and make it where it's impossible. Also, our fire, our EMS, those people, and we've got ones on our fire and EMS that's went out and done some studies on their own, on their own time, and found out that this is not going to work for them. You know, 30 seconds may not seem like a lot, but you know, if you're having a heart attack or you're bleeding out out there, 30 seconds may mean a big difference whether or not they can get to you. So, you know, they can say anything in Indianapolis you guys want to say, but we don't want a J-turn in Argus. You know, when the uh, governor wants to run again and he finds out that Marshall County didn't always vote for him, my answer is this, call in dot and ask them why. Marshall County didn't always want to vote for you because nobody down in Indianapolis is helping us. I know my time's not up, but I'm finished. Very well said. Very well said. Thank you, Councilman. Those comments. Our next speaker will be Councilman Justin Johnson. Our next speaker this evening on our schedule to sign in will be Councilman Justin Johnson. And as uh, Councilman Johnson's making his way forward, I'll also remind everyone again uh, to certainly su feel free to supplement uh, your verbal comments with written statements as well for inclusion into the transcript. Councilman Johnson, the floor is now yours, sir. All right, thank you. Thank you, sir. That was very well said, Randy. And I just want to add, how can the state be okay with us not letting our horse, horse and buggy traffic cross 31? I mean, that's not a comment, that's a question. And, and again, the questions we'll, we'll address in the open house. Very as, quickly, but, as we saw the presentation, it does accommodate them. So it, it, that, it actually does accommodate them. Wait, it's his turn. And then, oh, this is the council. All right. <laughs> you. So what's the speed limit going to be on the people on 31 when a semi is going across to go around a J turn. What's the speed limit going to be for the traffic that's continuing? No question. On US 31? Yes. Uh, it's it'll remain the same as far as I understand. It's a what? That's going to work. Again, and again, it's a proposal. We really want we really want questions to be addressed out there because that way everybody's not waiting and everything. But in, this is the right now. The speed limit is going to remain the same. But what we're looking at here is folks are right now they're crossing say a semi crossing three lanes of traffic, where here you're crossing two and two. So the mathematics have to make it so that that's not going to be as big of an issue. It's going to be actually safer to do it this way, because you're going to protect it. And then 150 cars in an hour across 110. So that's two cars a minute. It's just not going to work. I don't, I don't see it working good. Put a stoplight up for a temporary fix. No. That's worse. And again, for the specific questions, we can certainly address those much, much better um, in the foyer area with the benefit of the displays and also the animation and then also uh, the benefit of having members of our design team because we don't have any of our designers on the stage at this particular time. So if you have a specific question, we would really respectfully request that you, you hold on to those or uh, we have members of our team in the foyer area right now that can certainly walk through uh, the design elements, uh, speed limits, and so forth and so on. But during the comment session, because this is an official hearing, uh, it's very important that we capture public statements 
for the record so that a transcript can be prepared. The Q&A, because we don't have microphones placed throughout the room, uh, we're not capturing you know, questions that might be uh, presented from the audience unless they're presented as a statement uh, from the podium. So again, we're happy to answer that yes. question everybody has. We'll be here as long as those are. Right. We just want to make sure everybody can get through to the comments. But if you want to chat, I have well, the, only, the only other comment I got is uh, I don't believe that uh, it's going to be good for Argus. It's not going to be good for our industrial. And uh, I'm not for a J turn. And I know one council member isn't here. And it's Julie Stoffer, and she is not for a J turn either. So that's all I got to say. Very well. Very well. Very well. Very well. Very well. Okay. Our next local official to sign in on our speaker schedule, and this will. Uh, we have a Marshall County Commissioner. First name Kevin. I cannot quite make out the last name, but do we have a Marshall County Commissioner? My first name is Kevin. Sir, if you pronounce the first and last name so we can make sure we have you for the record. It's for Kevin Overmeyer. Kevin Overmeyer. Oh, very good, very good. Thanks. I have a letter here that I need to read tonight. Um, it is from Senator, State Senator Randy Head. I am very sorry I am not able to be at the presentation of tonight's meeting. But I do want to express my opposition to building J-turns in Marshall County. Representative Bill Friend and I have had private meetings with NDOT to discuss the proposed J-turns in this community. Both of us have agreed and voiced our opinions to NDOT that J-turns are not right for our community and there are better and more efficient alternatives to making our roads safer. I want you all to know that I stand with opponents of J-turns and will insist that NDOT understands the communities and my concerns. After meeting with NDOT several times to voice my frustration of the proposed J-turns, I am upset that NDOT still insists on placing them in a district that they are not needed nor wanted. Please do not hesitate to call NDOT and voice your disapproval of the proposed J-turns as a community, I believe it is our job to voice our opinions to ensure we have the best resources. If I can ever be of any assistance, please do not hesitate to contact my office. This was signed by Randy Head, State Senator, who represents the southern part of Marshall County. Um, my comments as a county commissioner, um, I'm opposed to these also. I don't think it's right for the town of Argus. I don't think it's right for the community of Argus. And when this 31 project started several, several years ago, back in the early 2000s, this was never thought of. This was not supposed to happen. When we did US 30 to South Bend, we had meetings. The county gave up some things to get some bridges to get, an, to get the interchange at Williams Parkway. We have not had that discussion since then. And I know that I've been around here for over 18 years now, and I've heard comments from the officials up here at NDOT, uh, we're going to look at these and interchange in the future. Things change, governors change, NDOT commissioners change, priorities change at NDOT, and once this is done, you'll never be back. That's my comment. Very well. Very well said. Very well said. Thank you, Commissioner, for those comments. Our next speaker on our schedule will be Councilman Newell. We have a Town Councilman Newell with us this evening. No. My apologies. No. <laughs> very good, very good. Councilman, be so kind as to state your first and last name before presenting your comments. Uh, the floor is now yours, sir. My name is George Nall. I'm the Town Council or Vice President here in Argus. I don't think I can be what Randy said. I mean, that was just too good. We're not here to beat you guys up. I understand you're doing your job. I appreciate that, but those are my comments. Everything we've talked about, your slide says one fatality. We had two, sorry. I'm on the fire department also with these guys, so there was two. Uh, your J turns in Indiana, you have already admitted that have less traffic and do not have the same land topographic area, so it's not apples to apples. Um, Quick. It will impact our industrial parks. That's no doubt about it. I mean, the highway itself impacted all small towns already, let alone to do something like this. 
There is alternatives, the overpasses as you talked about. This J turn is nothing new. We heard about it three years ago. So it's been in the works for at least three years. We had notification that they wanted to do it. And now they really want to do it. So they talk about studies as far as doing overpasses. They could have done an overpass at the same time they've done the J turn study, in my opinion. Um, so the federal government knew about this before. <coughs> it's just not a good thing for Argus all the way around. I'm not gonna go into the traffic patterns or whatever. I've driven semi in this area for over 40 years. If somebody's coming from 10, wanting to go to Culver, if somebody's coming from Culver, wanting to go to Argus, they're still gonna, they're gonna meet. I mean, you got the semi coming across. He's gonna cross the three lanes. We're gonna get a T-bone yet down at the other end. It's gonna happen. There you go, thanks. Thank you, Councilor Moore, for his comments. Our next local official, elected official to sign in on our speaker schedule this evening will be Marshall County Commissioner Mike Delp. Commissioner Delp will be our next speaker on uh, our schedule this evening. Commissioner, the floor is now yours, sir. Okay, thanks for your time. Matt, Chris, I'll work with you on some other projects, and I appreciate what you're trying to do here. I do appreciate the, de the de desire to implement something in a timely fashion. Um, if I really thought the J-turns were going to be it and then we were going to have an overpass, I could understand that. But I don't think that's the bottom line goal here. And so that's my concern is that we're not going to end up with an overpass here. I hear enough from the Argus constituents, other Marshall County constituents that I represent, and I just don't think we're being fair from that standpoint. I don't know if anybody's going to speak here from Culver Academies, but you know, we do have a lot of traffic going to Culver Academy. We have 800 winter students there. We have 1,400 summer students there. We have 15 key weekends that go on. I don't know if those things have been factored in. Um, and I guess I'll just end with this. Is, you know, I'm trying to understand why j turns were not used in Kokomo, Westfield, Carmel, <laughs> Lakeville, and Statistics up there that you had said in Michigan they use them on traffic that's five and a half times more. In Maryland, two and a half times more. In Missouri, one and a half times more. If that's the case, then why haven't we used those things in these other locations, again, to accomplish what needs to be accomplished? So, again, I applaud you. I appreciate the effort being put in. I appreciate what NDOT's trying to do to reduce serious accidents here. But if the bottom line is it's going to be a J-turn, Permanently, I'm not in favor. Thank you. Very well said. Thank you, Commissioner, for those comments. Our next speaker to sign in on our local officials, our elected official speakers uh, scheduled this evening will be Susan Umbaugh. Suzanne. Suzanne Umbaugh. If I'm pronouncing that right, I've been struggling here the last few minutes, so let me make sure if that's right. Ma'am, the floor is now yours. Suzanne Umbaugh, Argus Town Council. I am not for the J-turn. I do not think it would benefit our community. Right now, we're working very, very hard to move this community forward. We've got several projects that are about to happen, and we need the state behind us to support us in these projects, and I don't think the J-turn is the answer for that. I don't think you understand the traffic that we have. When we have holidays, Blueberry Festival, you could not get out on 31. We were traveling that highway, you couldn't get out on it. And the speed, the speed has increased here significantly. It's not what it used to be. I'm not sure if you've measured it on holidays, but please do that. If we get a J-turn, when will we get an interchange? I would like to know, if we get this, when will the interchange come? Because we do need the interchange for our community. And I would like to challenge you to think outside the box. There are always other solutions. When we, when we come up against a block, 
there's always a way around it. There are always other ways to think about it. So I challenge you to think outside the box. Please come up with a solution that will work for our community, because we need your support. Very well. Very well. Thank you, ma'am, for those comments. Uh, Councilwoman Umbaugh was actually the last local and elected uh, official to sign in as a speaker. However, having heard from our local officials, perhaps there are other local officials who might be in our audience who did not have an opportunity to sign in as a speaker. Certainly want to afford an opportunity for any additional uh, local or elected officials who might be in our audience uh, who would like an opportunity to present a comment. Okay. Very well, and we will move forward and transition to the pink sheet which is titled, uh, which is uh, an indication of our, our speakers who have signed in requesting an opportunity uh, to speak this evening. So we have uh, several sheets, uh, several speakers uh, that have signed in requesting an opportunity to speak. I also mentioned, uh, again, even if you participate as a speaker this evening, by all means, feel free to supplement your verbal comments with written statements as well. Um, so, as we transition to our speaker schedule, our general speaker schedule, our first speaker on our schedule will be Glenn Roberts. Our first speaker to sign in on the pink sheet um, requesting the opportunity to speak will be Glenn Roberts. Mr. Roberts, is he in our audience? Yes, sir. Yes. If you'd like to, if you'd be so kind as to utilize the microphone and the, the freestanding mic here. There's a microphone uh, there for you, sir. Yes, sir. About 45 years ago, the highway department went through my farm out here south of the river tracks. We took it to court. The judge told them what they had to pay, plus the interest on it. The highway department never paid it. My lawyer filed a paper that they never paid it. They flooded my farm for 45 years. Now they want to put in a crazy J turn or U turn all it is. Get people killed coming 100 mile an hour down the road. There's no reason why they can't put in a bridge and do it right. They don't want to. They don't care about the farmers. They don't care about you. They don't care about anybody. So you're not going to change your mind. You're going to do it. Thank you. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Roberts, for those comments. Thank you. Our next speaker to sign in on our speaker schedule this evening will be Judith. Dick Meyer, the next speaker to sign in on our schedule requesting an opportunity to have his or her comment entered into the official public record will be Judith Dittmeyer. And as Ms. Dittmeyer is making her way forward, I'd like to also thank our audience thus far for the respect and courtesy paid to all of our speakers uh, this evening. And certainly uh, I'll mention, even if you did not have an opportunity to uh, sign in as a speaker. Um, hopefully we'll have an opportunity to open the floor to additional speakers after our signed in speaker schedule. Ms. Dittmeyer, the floor is now yours, ma'am. Thank you. Um, I am kind of representing a group that, you know, we're trying to move Argus forward. We're sitting as far as on the redevelopment, you know, we're trying to do things to um, increase our economic development in this community, which is really important for a small town. Small towns around Indiana are drying up, and we can't afford that. So doing this J-turn is going to cut off a lot of access. Um, it's going to prevent people from coming to our local communities, not just Argus, but as well as Culver. Um, easy access to these small towns are what we want. So I have concerns as far as that. Um, as a former school board member, I was privy to seeing some of those plans several years ago, and those plans did include an interchange. 
Um, when I saw the plans for the J-turn, my first thought was Michigan left-hand turn. They don't work without stoplights. US 31 is not going to I envision our buses trying to cross over a couple lanes of traffic going up icy um, overpass over the railroad, trying to get over, make the turn come back. I, they're precious cargo, and I do not want to see that happen. We have to look at the volume of traffic that we have on 31. And as what has been said on several times, it's not just the regular nine to five traffic. We have to look at the holidays, um, the Notre Dame games, as people have said. Let's not forget our 4-H fair. We have kids traveling to our town that are gonna have to cross over and make with, with animals. I, I can't even imagine. Um, let's talk about the festivals, as she said. We also have Lake Fest, we have the Academy. There are so many things that happen that you can't factor in as well as inclement weather. The other part that I have to say is you presented um, statistics. Well, I'm speaking as a parent. My daughter was one of those statistics. Now, I'm lucky to say she was okay. And I realized there's a problem, and if I truly felt, as a parent, that this was the answer, I would be 100% on board. But I can tell you that as a parent, looking at all these designs, I'm not. I applaud the fact that you are looking at it, but I know for the last 20 years this has been discussed. Let's just bide our time, do the right thing, most of us have been patient with this intersection for years. Yeah. We know the different access points. You know, we make our crossing. You know what? You don't cross 10 and 31 when it's 5 o'clock at night. You go down to either Dewey or you go over to Log House Road. I mean, we're locals. We know. We're willing to wait to do the right thing. So I hope that you will. Thank you. Very well, very well said. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Didmeyer, for those comments. Our next speaker on our schedule this evening will be Paul Stearns. Our next speaker to sign in, requesting an opportunity to have uh, his or her comment entered into the official public record this evening, will be Mr. Paul Stearns. Uh, Mr. Stearns, the floor is now yours, sir. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time this night. Thank you for trying to make our intersection safe. I think you've failed. This is going to cause the accidents to move to your J-turns. Something else we're always worried about. I've never heard anything up there, but we want to get faster from South Bend to Indianapolis and back. You're making us drive through country. There's no comment about the businesses that are out there. You guys successfully cut off La Paz and Lakeville years ago. You put up the bypass. Businesses are closing there at those intersections. We don't want to lose the businesses we have, we want to grow them. I'm president of Vargas Redevelopment. That's my job, is to help this town grow. We cannot do that if you're cutting us off for a second time. You did it when you put the four lane out there to begin with. The second thing is emergency response. Mrs. Dittmeyer lives on the west side of 31, as does many of these people. Aren't their lives worth more than getting from Indianapolis to South Bend and back a few seconds faster. My Lord, they're already flying 70, 80, and 90 miles an hour out there because you gave them the right to do it coming down what you bypassed lately. I think our jobs here and our lives here matter a lot more than a few precious seconds saved driving to Indianapolis and back. Thank you. Very well, very well. Thank you, Mr. Stearns, for those comments. Our next speaker on our speaker schedule this evening requesting an opportunity to present comments for inclusion uh, into the uh, public record will be Steve Stryker. 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 Apologize. 
Sir, the floor is now yours if you'd be so kind as to state your first and last name, please. Thank you. Uh, Steve Stricker, um, I'm not going to really say anything that nobody else has already said. I've got a wife and three daughters. I probably use that intersection more, my family, than anybody here, I would argue. We go through that intersection myself twice a day, my wife twice a day, my daughter goes through there twice a day, my middle daughter goes through there with my youngest daughter in the car twice a day. Something needs to be done. I don't argue that fact one bit. Mike Delp said it perfectly. Okay? If you want to know why we're not getting an interchange, it doesn't have anything to do with time on a study. It has to do with money. All they're saying is that we're stuck in the middle. Plymouth gets their interchange, South Bend gets their bypass, Kokomo gets their bypass, Westfield gets whatever they get, Carmel gets whatever they get, and we get the shaft. We're stuck in the middle once again. Do it right. Take your time if it takes time. Like Judy said, we'll wait, but do it right. Don't shaft us again. Okay? Your study, okay, shows traffic patterns and all that stuff, but like Judy said, there is a cross-country meet at the Academy on Saturday. 5,000 people are going to be going to the Culver Academy on Saturday for cross-country meet. Did that study take that into account? Nope. County Fair, did that study take that into account? Notre Dame football games, did that study take that into account? This is not a normal U.S. 421, 114 intersection where you can do this. Okay? You're going to get more people killed by doing this than if we just wait and do it right. Thank you. Very well, very well. Thank you, sir, for those comments. Our next speaker to sign in on our speaker's schedule to have his or her comment entered into the official public record will be Kevin Overmeyer. Then moving forward, then our next speaker will be John. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I had that expression on my face. Thank you, John. <laughs> You're stepping forward. Appreciate that very much. If you'd be so kind as to take your first and last name, uh, the floor is now yours, sir. Yes, my name is John Kegarice. I help you out. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time. I think it's pretty obvious at this point that I don't think anybody here is in favor of this. It's just uh, pretty obvious to the general public that this is a bad idea. I've been a professional driver for 26 years. I've held a CDL for 26 years. I've experienced just about every intersection, every type of intersection, every idiot. You name it, I've seen it on the road somewhere, somebody's done it. So this is coming from a voice of experience who's actually seen things on the road, not models, not projections, not statistics, real life, what happens on the road. So it seems to me like you guys are selling this project really hard. If you, were, if you don't have to sell it, if it was a good idea, you wouldn't have to sell it to us as the public. We would be all in favor of it. <clears throat> if this is a proposal, where's your alternate ideas? Proposals mean there's alternate points of view. We've only seen one. I'd like to see more. <clears throat> in your previous meeting in June, I spoke with you, I can't remember your name, Matt, yeah. I believe. So you uh, really pushed the intersection over there on 41 hard, said it was a great idea, so I went over there and looked at that intersection. I really don't think that intersection is all that you're saying it is. It doesn't have the volume that US 31 has, and the turning lanes that you say are created for semis, not created for semis. The asphalt's getting tore up, semis are making hard turns, it's not made for real life traffic. <clears throat> Again, I think the public deserves a proper fix to this situation, not a band-aid. If we have to wait, we have to wait. That's fine. I don't understand where our money goes. We have representatives who are spending it like it's going out of style. Apparently, we aren't the people who get spent on. But we have a $2 billion surplus that we got from this toll road sale. If they would invest in that, even at 3%, you're talking about $600 million, or $60 million a year that they could be investing in our infrastructure, and they're not. 
And I urge everyone here tonight to go and contact your representatives, the governor, and see if we can get this resolved. Thank you. Very well, very well, very well said. Thank you, sir, for those comments. Our next speaker to sign in on our schedule this evening will be Andy Stone. Our next speaker to sign in requesting an opportunity to have his or her comment entered uh, into the official record this evening will be Andy Stone. And again, I'll remind everyone that even if you participate as a speaker, uh, please, by all means, feel free to supplement your verbal comments with written statements uh, as well. Mr. Stone, thank you so much. The floor is now yours, sir. Thank you for your time. I am the Transportation Director for Argus Community Schools. I do not speak on behalf of the school, but for myself as the Director of Transportation, a 20 plus year CDL operator, and a 15 plus year fire service member, okay? There's a few things listed at the beginning of the presentation that we were concerned as the D Indiana Department of Transportation. One was cost, speed of going from Indianapolis to South Bend, and obviously safety of the people and residents of the community. Well, as far as I'm concerned, we don't have enough time to do the overpass correctly due to lack of funds. J8 turn is a band-aid fix to get that taken care of because it's less money. You, in your previous presentation, you indicated there was not enough traffic on US 10 to really require a stoplight because there's only 105, I think was the number you used. So if you put a stoplight up, what is the cost? Very minimal because there is a flashing light. So therefore, the poles, wires, electric, and everything is there. You remove that, you put up huge stoplights at basically zero expense except for labor. Now, that's gonna make it safe for everyone. When people are going from north and south, since there is a lack of cross traffic, they will seldom have to stop. And when they do, they will stop for no longer than 120 seconds because that is the time the stoplight takes, all right? So if you are slowing down traffic north and south once in a while due to the lack of traffic on 10, creating it safe, only requiring that traffic to be interrupted for 120 seconds, how does everyone not benefit from that? Plus, 36 miles away, there is a stoplight at Peru truck stop. Not even the highway, a county road, and a truck stop on the other side, where they're going to be stopping, potentially, for 120 seconds. Four miles down the road, Peru has a second stoplight, where they're going to be potentially stopping at 120 seconds. So, minimal cost, improved safety, limited interruptions, South Bend, Indianapolis. Right there's everything you want for everything solved. And while we are doing this stoplight, you can try to save a little money so we can have price be able to have the interchange later on. I don't see where that's very complicated to figure out. Here's the last thing I want to comment. What will happen to Marshall Street, 16th Road, 17th Road? 18 or 20B where I live. What are those roads going to happen in the future? Are you going to close them all off? No one's even mentioned that. Where are you going to go with that? All right, so the, it's an easy solution, minimal expense, everybody's safer, no disruption, no real interruptions from South Bend to Indianapolis. Thank you. Very well, very well Thank you, Mr. Stone, for his comments. Our next speaker on our speaker schedule this evening will be Doug Middleton. Next speaker on our schedule will be Doug Middleton, and as Mr. Middleton is making his way forward, I will mention that we do have members of our project team available in the foyer area. 
Uh, should you have uh, questions that you'd like to uh, receive answers to or perhaps uh, require further clarification, uh, members of our team are staffing uh, the display tables in the foyer area. Mr. Wolf, the floor is now yours, sir. Uh, for you that do not know me, my name is Doug Middleton. I am assistant superintendent of the town, school board vice president, fire EMS, <coughs> almost 20 years on the fire, picked up more bodies out at that intersection than I ever cared to imagine. What I have in this hand is over 700 signatures opposed to J. Turner. With that is a letter that goes to everyone down the state, yourselves included. If anybody would stand up that's for the J-turn, I would greatly appreciate it. Anyone. For the record, let it be known that two of the INDOT people never got up. <laughs> People travel the intersection of 10 and 31 a year. That's on a Tuesday to Wednesday count, 24 hours, not a weekend. 650,000 people cross that intersection on 10 a year. Their numbers, their statistics, not mine. I think for those people, we owe better than a 50% reduction in crashes when we can eliminate them. For the 600 plus kids at our school, I think we owe them more than that, than a 50% chance of them being in a wreck. I'd like to know what the numbers are you're trying to gain from your, I know it's not a question, it's a, it's a comment. What the numbers are they're trying, are they trying to reduce by 50%? Well, if you want to get two, 50% is holding one. That's not very good odds. I heard words tonight like could, maybe, slightly. Those are not the words I like to hear. 421, excuse me, 41 and 114. Three million <coughs> at that intersection. Almost three times more here. In the last, since 2014, they have a 25% reduction in traffic going eastbound and a 15% traffic decrease going eastbound since the J turn. Matt, can your business afford 15% loss in revenue? Any other businessmen here, can they handle 15% loss in revenue in one year? How about 25 in three years? I didn't think so. We had a factory, a business proposed coming to our area. I don't think it's still done, but they're looking at 50 semis a day going out that intersection going north and south. I don't think it's right. I was on board J-turns until I looked at the Federal Traffic Administration numbers. This intersection does not qualify by no means. That's all I got. All right, sir. All right, sir. Mr. Miller, thank you very much, sir, for those comments. Our next speaker to sign in on our schedule will be Daniel Voorhees. Hopefully I'm pronouncing the last name correctly. Maurice is making his way down. He's sir, if you'd be so kind as to state your first and last name. The Daniel floor is now yours, sir. Daniel Voris. Voris. Very good. Everything that I was going to say has been pretty well covered tonight. I'd like to reiterate. We all know what happened to Argus when they bypass went through, what happened to the downtown. We see what's happening on Paz, their business is way off. They've already buried a burger game up there because there's not lack of business. Um, it's just going to be harder on Argus. It's, it's 
It's going to be hard on the community. You know, the 4-H, and it's going to be confusing for the factories, for, for the truck drivers coming in and out, and for people who want to stop at McDonald's or even go in Argus. It's going to be confusing. How do you get there? Especially from the north. And uh, I'm just totally against it. I think if they're really concerned about safety, which I am, it's bad intersection, it's been a band aid. It's, and your solution's a band aid. And for, we waited 40 years on for a fix, and there's no fix. If you really wanted to solve it, you could enforce it, cut the speed limit down to 55 or even 45 and enforce it. That would help a lot. A lot more than this bill, and a lot less cost. Yes. Very well said. Thank you, sir, for those comments. Our next speaker on our speaker schedule this evening will be Bryce Hensley. Our next speaker will be Bryce Hensley. Mr. Hensley, the floor is on your side. Thank you uh, for letting me have a voice here tonight. Thank you for having this meeting. I think enough has been said about everyone is against the J-turn. Um, I get a couple points here. At the intersection that they're 41 and 114, you have no railroad with a bridge over it. Any traffic that has to go south or go west will have to pull out in the wintertime on ice and people drive 70, 80 mile an hour and faster coming over that railroad track heading north. Now the superhighway, this was done to increase commerce travel in the state of Indiana to make business grow, to make business easier. You know, when you do such a great job south there above Indianapolis, Keystone Parkway 431, the Carmel area, that is great, great work. South Bend, Plymouth North, great work. It's beautiful, it's great. But don't make Argus or Marshall County and Fulton County the armpit of the highway. Let's do it right. I don't feel a J-turn is gonna solve the issue for commerce to growth, for taxation to increase for the state of Indiana. I mean, it's gonna kill business and artists. It's gonna hinder that there. I mean, just to what? Like it's already been said, to decrease 50% chance of accidents. Um, I, think, I think the state, what they have already done, deserves more than that. I mean, let's do it right. Let's do something better than a J-turn. I mean, if that was the only alternative, if there was no bridge in the highway and it was totally flat ground, I think a lot more people would be on board for something to be done because there are so many accidents. But when you look from 2012 to now, there's only been one fatality. I don't think a JH was the answer. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hensley, for his comments. Our next speaker on our speaker's schedule this evening uh, is the President and CEO of the Marshall County Economic Development Corporation. Uh, the first name is Jerry. I quite, haven't quite made out the last name, but the floor is now yours, sir. If you'd be so kind as to take your first and last name so we can uh, make sure we capture that for the official public record. Here's 25 cents. There's a quarter on the floor. Very good. Contribution. <laughs> first name is Jerry, last name is Chavez. I'm the President and CEO of Marshall County EDC. Very good. You know, my written comments will supply in a letter form, but uh, as the EDC, we are responsible for economic development in the county. Um, on September the 8th, 2017, my board of directors voted in opposition to the J-Term. We joined many, many economic development agencies in Northern Indiana. We joined our county commissioners, we joined Regional Development Authority of Northern Indiana. We joined MACOG and a whole host of different government agencies that are responsible for services to our citizens. We do this, we're in favor of safety and mobility. <clears throat> We believe that J turns will impact economic development. In your studies, I have yet to see anything with regards to transportation from a distribution perspective. And what's odd for me 
is when you add distance and travel to the equation, then you make a already difficult activity, transportation, more complicated. On April 24, 2017, MCDC attended a meeting in Indianapolis that was organized by Senator Head. We joined representatives from MACOG, officials from IEDC, officials from NDOT, basically to inform them what we were trying to accomplish as a economic development plan for the town of Argus and the Marshall County. <clears throat> A lot has been said, there's probably a lot of information with regards to plans, but MCDC has been with other agencies to include uh, NISCO, MPA, as well as Norfolk Southern, about almost two years of planning for a rail serve industrial park at the crossroads of 17 and US 31. Not only are we taking a lot of plans <clears throat> and trying to develop that, but there's a lot of money at stake. The town of Argus has already spent $600,000 to purchase 80 acres of property. They do this because they have a vision to grow the community. We've heard uh, quite a bit in terms of, of growing the community, and, and this is a type of activity that's, going, that's occurring as we speak today. My organization just authorized me to take out a $2.1 million loan to construct a manufacturing center, which is a term that we use to reflect a shell building. MCDC does have a rich history with that type of enterprise. We located Pretzels Inc. into Plymouth, Indiana, over $18 million worth of capex on that particular project. So we feel very uh, encouraged that we can accomplish even more than just one building for the town of Argus going forward. You know, I want to close by saying <clears throat> I've yet to see any information relative to the impact on economic development as we embark to begin construction of a 50,000 square foot building expandable to 300,000 square feet. What is that impact going to be relative to that project? And as you can envision, there's some real financial consideration that must be explored a little bit further. I submit to officials at NDOT that you look at return on investment. That return on investment, whether that's a interchange, look at the return on investment if this project is successful. Uh, these type of projects relative to a rail sort of park, they're quite large in their scope typically in the order of $20 million plus, create a lot of jobs as well. That's why we are taking a lot of pains in trying to make this project uh, go forward. Uh, very unique project, very unique process, but uh, there's a lot of people behind this that are banking on the success of this. We want NDOT to be a valued partner and help support that. Thank you very much. Very good, very good. Thank you, sir, for those comments. Our next speaker to sign in on our speaker schedule this evening, requesting an opportunity to have their comment entered into the official record, will be Michelle Avery, who's representing the Culver Academies. So Ms. Avery's making her way forward. And again, I'll mention that if you participated as a speaker, or even if you have not, Again, keep in mind uh, the other options available to you in terms of submitting comments via email, our mailing address, we have comment forms in the foyer as well. Ms. Avery, the floor is now yours, ma'am. Thank you. My name is Michelle Avery. I'm not necessarily representing Culver and speaking okay. out as Culver, but I do work in the Human Resource Office. Right. Uh, so I am employed there. I've been employed there for 10 years. Um, I did have a couple of, of uh, questions and things I wanted to give you knowledge about from the months of april to october there are hundreds if not thousands of visitors that come to the culver academy they are they are parents they are grandparents they are alumni they're bringing their children to camp they're picking their children up from winter school and so on and so forth 
This weekend is the uh, cross-country meet that someone rep uh, told us about earlier. There's actually 7,000 participants who are going to be on the Culver Academy's campus this weekend. Now, many of these people who come to Culver to bring their kids to camp or to school, they're from out of the region. Some of them are from the state of Indiana. Some of them are from Argus. Many of them are not. Many are from out of, out of state and even out of country. A J turn is a very unique type of a transition on a road that I think would be quite confusing to our visitors who come to come to Culver um, as part of the education of their children. Um, and then someone uh, also mentioned June and July at that intersection. There's a steady stream of trucks with livestock trailers that are coming in and out of Argus for uh, different, different reasons. I really fear that we'll have the truck and, trail, the truck and livestock trailers lining up to do the J-turn. There's a lot of them there that will slow down that, speed, that speeding uh, part of the road. That's a very big concern. Uh, we saw an estimate that seemed kind of high for an overpass. Um, I've talked to a couple of engineering friends who thought an uh, 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 intersection with an overpass uh, with a off 31 South and on the 31 South at the north, northwest corner of the intersection and off 31 North and on to 31 North and at the intersection of the southeast corner would be more like six to eight million dollars. So I query in DOT to make sure that they receive the proper uh, bids. Did they go out and seek different bids from different contractors um, to do this project? If Highway 4 and Highway 6 can both get an overpass, and I know Highway 4, I grew up in Lake Pass in Lakeville area, they do not have near the traffic on Highway 4 that we have for the Culver Academies. How do they get an overpass and we don't? Thank you. Very well, very well, very well said. Thank you, Ms. Avery, for those comments. Ms. Avery actually was the last speaker to sign in on our schedule. However, having heard from our speakers, uh, there might be someone else in our audience who had not had an opportunity to sign in as a speaker, but having heard from our previous speakers, perhaps having reviewed the presentation, uh, there may be someone else in our audience who would like an opportunity to present his or her comment and have that entered into the official public record. This evening certainly want to afford an opportunity for anyone else in our audience who has not presented a comment uh, thus far this evening. Uh, if they'd like to present a comment, we'd like to open the floor to them at this time. Yes, ma'am, you have your hand raised. If you'd be so kind as to just make your way to the front of the auditorium. And I'll also mention again to feel free to supplement your verbal comments with written statements. And then also I'll mention uh, certainly members of our project team will be here this evening, throughout the evening, for as long as you would like us to be, to certainly entertain uh, questions uh, in regards to the proposal. Ma'am, if you'd be so kind as to state your first and last name, the floor is now yours. My name is Shannon Kegarice. I live in Fulton County and I work in Marshall County. I travel this intersection every day. I am an RN and I just want to make a statement for the emergency personnel that will have to deal with these intersections. From the American Heart Association, when a person has a cardiac arrest, survivor depends on immediately getting CPR from someone nearby. Almost 90% of people who suffer out of hospital cardiac arrest die. CPR, if especially performed in the first few minutes of a cardiac arrest, can double or triple a person's chance of survival. You are delaying your emergency personnel by 30 seconds, if not longer you are now decreasing that person that they are going to um, go to to help do CPR. 
or maybe it's a fire emergency, you are decreasing their chance of surviving by delaying their care. Just wanted to make that point known. Very well said, very well said. Thank you, Deb, for those comments. Additional speakers at this time uh, who would like an opportunity to have their comment. Yes, sir, I see your hand if you'd be so kind as to uh, make your way forward to the front of the auditorium. Additional speakers who have not yet uh, participated as uh, speakers this evening certainly want to open the floor uh, to all of our speakers uh, this evening. Sir, if you'd be so kind as to state your first and last name, the floor is now yours, sir. Um, my name is Burrell Hain. Uh, I'm a farmer in there and I've been growing up in this whole area all my life. My biggest concern is it was mentioned slightly about eventually the side roads are going to be closed. How long that's going to take, we don't really know. Right now, they try to tell me out here I would use 10 under this J turn. We avoid that intersection as much as possible. But eventually, the other roads are going to be closed and we're going to be forced to have to use it, them J turns, and they will not work. Additional speakers at this time who have not had an opportunity to participate during the comment session. Certainly don't want to overlook uh, anyone else in our audience who might want to present a comment this evening. Do we have additional speakers who have not yet presented comments this evening? Okay. Very well. Then reading the body language around the room, I would say that uh, at this point in time, we'll go ahead and conclude our formal session this evening. However, uh, the school's been very accommodating to us, so we're going to be out in the foyer area entertaining questions uh, for as long as you would like us to, to be here this evening. I'll also mention that next Wednesday, uh, September 27th, we will have a public hearing in this very room uh, to talk about the intersection of US 31 and State Road 110. Uh, so again, we will be back next week to talk about that particular intersection. So we hope to see you uh, next Wednesday back here at the school. This time, let's conclude the formal session and invite you to visit with our project team uh, in the foyer area. Thank you so much, everyone, for your time this evening.